How's it going everyone? John here and welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. And if you're wanting to learn how to stream, be sure to go ahead and take a look at the other content on the channel. If you're enjoying that content, be sure to go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell icon. That way you can get notified every time I upload a video. Now in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to customize your Twitch channel in terms of your panels and your offline screen image. Now, if you guys already know how to do all that, then this video is not going to be for you. This is more catered towards beginning streamers, but definitely go ahead. Like I said, take a look at the other content on the channel. You might find something there that you might need some help with. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to twitch.tv, go to your channel. And the way to go to your channel is you're going to click on your little avatar here on the top right corner, and you're going to go to channel. It's then going to display what you see right here. And we need to kind of get rid of this clutter that we have on the sides. That way we have a little bit more space to work with. So in order to get the follow channels and your chat to go away, we're going to click on the little arrow that points to the left, and that's going to collapse that to make these guys little tiny bubbles. To get rid of the chat, we're going to click on collapse on the far right. And now we have enough real estate space to work with. So we're going to move on down. These are the panels that I currently have for mine. Now, yours might look different. You may not have it as wordy or as eye popping with the images and everything like that. That's perfectly fine. What you want to do, though, is at least have something there and to kind of give the viewer something to take a look at to kind of figure out if your channel is something that they want to continue going to because even if you're offline this stuff is still very important for a streamer to have that way when people do see your channel offline they can still kind of get an idea of what your community is all about versus only going to the vods and kind of skimming through so my rule of thumb is having the about me a follow me or also known as socials schedule, and then your rules. So as you can see on the top row, I consider this a grid. So the top row, I have my extension for my Twitter. So that way everyone can see what I've been talking about over on Twitter. My about me section, kind of give a little bit about who I am, my interests, and then you know what the channel is all about, where you can find me on social media, my schedule, and then also my rules. Now everyone kind of gets an idea of what the channel is about, how to act and also when they can watch me and how they can get in touch with me outside of streaming. Seems pretty fair. Moving on down, we have donations, my chat commands. If people want to subscribe, if they want to learn how to stream, they can jump right to the channel. And then we also have other stuff like collectible cards, which is through the stream loots, which will be kind of talked on a different video. The Amazon wish list, if people want to use it, and then also if people want to take a look at a leaderboard. So smaller little filler things in there that aren't super important. So you can kind of fill in what you need to. But how does all of this get put together? That is the biggest question. So that's what I'm going to show you. When you get over to your channel, it's going to be just this blank canvas. So you're going to want to click on the edit panels. And then you're going to scroll down until you see a box like this with a plus in it. When you click on it, it's going to say to add a text or image panel or an extension panel. So an image panel is going to be basically something like this, where it says donation has an image in it, and we can do some other stuff with it. An extension panel is going to be something like this or something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this, and now it gives you this blank panel to work with. So you can add a title to the top here. So we'll say title. You can add an image. And what you're going to do is you can click and drag the image. And I'm actually going to find you guys an image that I'll use. So now you can see that it's already got the, the like cropping grid box around it. So we're good to go. So we can hit done. And the image is going to be scaled to 320 pixels wide. So if you're going to go and create your own, then you want to make sure that it's at least going to be 320 pixels wide. That way you can keep the width and you don't have to worry about cropping the photo. The height, I don't think really matters. So you should be okay with height, but 
It's also going to matter on how small the text is inside the box. And I'm going to show you guys an example of a bad type of photo that will be able to be used on here. Now you can also make it a clickable link or a clickable photo. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these. I'll just grab my YouTube. So I'll paste that in there. And then you can put this in here, any type of description you want. And then hit submit. So once the submit is grayed out, go over here to the top where it says edit panels and you're going to uncheck it. So now everything will load up. And now you can see that there's a title on the top. You got the picture here and then a description for it. If I click on it, it's going to bring me right to the YouTube channel. Now, if I was to, like I was giving the example before, if I was to go and grab a different photo, let's say I was going to grab something for Mixer. See how now there's the box here, but this isn't going to be included because it's outside of this box. So if I want to grab everything, I can do that. And then I can go ahead and hit submit. Go up here again. And as you can see, it is super, super small. It's still clickable, but it's super, super small and you can't read it. So even though the image is a lot wider, it's about 800 pixels wide, you can still see that I had to go and crop everything in there, but it's so small. But if I was to take another photo, if I was to take one of my YouTube thumbnails, so if I was to take this YouTube thumbnail, and then submit it. Now you can see that it's larger because the information inside of the photo is much larger. So that is also a 1920 by 1080 photo. So you can definitely see that it's going to shrink and crop everything to the 320 regardless of the size of the photo. So let's go ahead and we'll remove this. Now, if you're wanting to shift things around, you can do that. So if you just grab, say, like the top anywhere up here, and then you just left click hold, you can drag things around and move it however you want. It can go up or down, left or right. And then once you save it, it will shift everything. So that's going to be how you add in your photo and everything like that to make it clickable, how you can move stuff around. Extensions are a little different, not too different. But if I wanted to see extensions, what this is going to do, if you click on all view all my extensions after you go back to the edit panels, what it's going to do is it's going to bring you into your stream manager and you're going to want to go down to extensions. So extensions is what adds a little bit more flavor to each stream. So you can do a bunch of different things when it comes to your extensions. You can do stuff for games. You can do loyalty points, schedule and countdown, viewer engagement, music. You can have like showing what you use as a streamer. And if you're an Amazon affiliate, you'll be able to use like your affiliate account and link it and everything like that. Uh, there's a lot of different extensions in here, so definitely go ahead and poke around and see which one you like. Now, once you do have the extensions installed or you find some that you like, go all the way to the very top and right next to Discovery, you're going to see My Extensions. Click on that and you'll see all of the ones that you have installed and all the ones that are activated. Now, there's different ones. You have ones that are going to be for panels and ones that are components. Components are going to be the ones that sit on the actual stream window when someone is watching and they hover over it. It displays stuff. So the Prime subscription and the Amazon one will actually show kind of like a list of all your stuff when it's hovered over and clicked on. Now the viewer can remove that away if they don't want to see it. 
So you don't have to worry about it always being there and interfering with the stream. That's completely fine. Now for the stream elements and for the Twitter timeline, that's going to be one that actually sits in your panels. So as you can see here, here is my Twitter timeline and then here is my stream elements leaderboards. So those ones are sitting inside of the actual panels here. And what I really like about the Twitter one is it allows people to see what I've been talking about on Twitter. And if I do like a poll on Twitter or let people know that I'm not streaming due to a certain reason, like everything is right there. So they can see all that because I even mentioned here that if the schedule changes that, you know, I'll update you guys on Twitter and Discord. So once you have all that stuff added, then you are pretty much good with your panels. Now, a little bit of a kind of advanced thing for you guys to know if you want to do like hyperlinks and stuff. For hyperlinks or for bold you can see that I have two like asterisks. So to do a bullet point, it's gonna be asterisk, space, and then you can see that I have two asterisks. That's to make it bold. And then you put whatever you want in between the two asterisks and then you end with two asterisks. Now I will give you guys the example here inside the video description as well. That way you guys have it. You can just change the, the wording inside because you can see that I have this in brackets and then this in parentheses. So that way you guys can just kind of like mess around if you want to do that. But for stuff with bold, it's very, very, very simple. So you can see two asterisks, whatever I want to be bold, and then two asterisks to end it. So that's going to be for that. I'm pretty sure there's also a link online that pretty much tells you all the different types of formats for stuff like that. But it definitely makes things stand out a little bit more, a little bit cleaner and easier for people to just kind of click on something if they're reading it. So like even though YouTube's right here and then YouTube's right here and YouTube's right there, I'm giving them multiple options to be able to click on those things. So that should pretty much cover everything for your panels. If I missed anything or if you have any questions about the panels, let me know in the comments. One last thing that I do want to bring to your attention is your offline banner. This is very important and you want to make sure that you have things there for people to be able to see and know where they can find you or at least have important information in there. Like how I have it where it shows that I'm streaming on X and Y days, excuse me, streaming X and Y days and what time you'll be able to find me because this is the first thing they're going to see when they come to the channel. So if they have that information and I even have my social plugins to know exactly where they can find me they're good to go. But if they go down here, that information still follows. So to be able to make something like this, or at least to upload it, what you're going to want to do is go back into your stream manager and you're going to want to go down to your preference channel and then scroll down and you'll see video player banner. And this is where you're going to upload it. Now, if you're trying to figure out how to get to your stream manager, what you're going to want to do is go over here on the right hand side click on your avatar and then you're going to go to creator dashboard and then your creator dashboard will instantly change to your stream manager and then that's exactly where you're going to be able to click on the three lines there and then you'll be able to see your preferences. I also have an entire video that goes over this so make sure you guys take a look at that. I'll link it in the card above as well as the video description below too. So you guys are getting a lot of information in this video so if you've stuck around this entire time, you guys are all stars and your channels are going to look great. But this is pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, though, or if I missed anything, please let me know in the comment section below. And make sure you guys also subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed today's video, click the bell icon. That way you get notified every time I upload a video. And you guys can catch me over on Twitch every single Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Streaming, talking, whatever. We can talk shop. You guys can watch me fail in games. It's always a good time. So I look forward to seeing you guys in the next stream or in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and take care.